Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Living African Podcast with your host, Anya Fombat. I have here today a fellow friend and colleague, podcast colleague, <laughs> Solange Che of You Can Be Anything Podcast. And so we're just going to have a girl friend chit chat here, talk about, you know, specifically Solange's story and how she came about her podcast and just you know the story of her life which is pretty interesting I must say um I've had a conversation with Solange before and I was very intrigued and very inspired so I am glad to have you here Solange how are you doing today I'm doing great thank you thank you so much Anya again for having me as your guest it feels different being on the other side of the right. room right being the guest and not the host yeah but thank you so much I do appreciate you inviting me to your podcast and I'm honored to be here thanks thank you it's a pleasure to have you here as well now let's just get straight into it uh who is Solange Chair? Who is Solange Che? If you want to know who Solange Che, you got to check out You Can Be Anything podcast because mm -hmm. that podcast is about me. It's, I talk about myself a lot in there. But again, for the purpose of this, Solange Che is uh, the fifth in the family of seven. Um, I come from a very, I call my family a very noble one. We actually have a host a, a show we call The House of Che Girls show and that's just to show you the bond I have with my family and besides I am a, a mom I have a 12 year old daughter and I wouldn't lie to you being a mom has been fun but also I've had those days that I just want to cry so that's the mom side of me mm -hmm. and aside of that that's family I'm also a Salesforce consultant and which means I do Salesforce. A lot of people ask me the Solange what is Salesforce and I tell them head over to Trailhead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that is who I am, except there is more you'll like to know, but that is just a synopsis of who Solange Chair is. Right. Thank you very much for that intro. So first of all, you're originally from Cameroon and um what state do you live in? Yes, yeah, so yeah, I'm from Cameroon not from anywhere in Cameroon other than small London. I am a blue blood uh, royalty, which means I have royal blood in me. Right. Yes, sorry, very but what is people. small London again? I keep hearing Akum. that. Word. I forgot. That, oh. is, that is Akum. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I come from Akum, also known as small London. And I'm not only just from Akum, I'm a blue blood, which means that I am a descendant of the palace of the kingdom. Awesome. So, that's what my background is back home today. I live in Franklin, Tennessee, hiding somewhere quiet and cozy and being who I am, being my best version, telling myself right. that I can be anything. So. Right. Thank you. Now, tell us your story um, of how you got here. You know, um, basically, just tell us, you know, how you morphed into who you are today. So that is a long story. But again, um, who is Solange Che? How have I become what I am today? Just like any other Cameroonian child, growing up in a family of seven biological kids to my parents and a ton more that are just relatives. So my parents are probably sponsoring or supporting as they grow, maybe just made, I grew up in a really huge home. I grew up in Kumbu. So for those of you who happen to listen, this, listen to this, you'll definitely know that I also speak Lamsa, which is the language spoken by the Nsa people. And I speak Mbakum, which is the language spoken by the Akum people. Talking about languages, if you are smart enough, you'll definitely know that I have a thing for languages. I don't, I would not just be thrilled that I speak English or French. I'll be thrilled that I speak something other than those two official languages of Cameroon. And this is one of the things that um, probably made me to stay when I went to university to study linguistics because I found a passion for languages. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, I did not go to university to study linguistics. When I went to university, my intention, my goal was to study journalism and mass communication because I felt within me 
like you know how growing up they'll ask us kids hey what do you want to become when you're grown up all what i said was i want to become a journalist i used to listen to the 7 13 years in cameroon and crtv and i just wanted to be those ladies back there i wanted to grow up and be one of those ladies having my dad sit in his sitting room and listen to me read the news out to him was my dream so when I went to university, that was what I wanted to do. But again, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, or the way it's supposed to be, I should put it, I did not have enough points to be able to study journalism and mass communication.